begin by making an incision in the simulated skin pad provided. We will now close this with interrupted sutures. Take a suture in your needle holder and insert the needle at right angles to the incision using counter pressure from the forceps. Pull the suture through gently without snagging it. Secure a standard reef knot, either using the one-handed technique or the instrument technique. Cut the suture to such a length as will allow it to be grasped for subsequent removal. As a rule of thumb, the distance from the edge of the wound should correspond to the thickness of the tissues being sutured. Each successive suture should be placed twice this distance apart, approximately double the depth of the tissue being sutured. Continue to insert your sutures in this manner across the entire wound. Now, let's insert another suture. When the incision edges are as closely aligned as these, it is appropriate to go through both edges with one smooth movement. But as will be demonstrated later, this is not always possible, and often the edges need to be taken separately. Once again, tie a reef knot. When inserting sutures, adopt a 1-2-3 technique. 1, 2, 3. Once again, tie your knot, making sure that it lies correctly without any tension. Once the wound is closed, ensure that none of the knots lie over the suture line. There may be two types of wound you will be required to close. One, a linear wound, as you see here, the other, an elliptical wound. If you have to make an elliptical wound, try and ensure that the length of the ellipse is at least three times its width. When closing a linear wound, it may be easier to start in the middle of the wound, as you see here, inserting an interrupted suture and then ligating it. Remember, with these simulated pads, the tissue is often very springy, more so than normal skin. Make allowance for this during your exercises. Once the initial suture has been placed, it is then easy to halve the remainder of the incision each side to continue to close it. Therefore, insert one suture halfway along the remainder of one end of the incision and ligate this. Then, having completed that suture, again halve the remaining wound and continue as shown. It may not be possible to do this for an elliptical incision, and you may need to undermine the incision edges to increase mobility of the skin edge. In this situation, it is not practical to start in the middle of the wound as such a suture will be under too much tension and therefore inaccurate. Thus, in this situation, start at the end of the incision, inserting a suture at right angles and getting right down into the depths of the incision, and then come back at the other edge of the skin, again at right angles to the skin edge, and ligate that particular suture. You can then proceed to the other end of the incision and, in a similar manner, insert the suture at right angles into the depth of the wound and then out again at right angles onto the other edge of the incision and tie a standard reef knot. You are now in a position to continue to close this ellipse, working from each end alternately, inserting interrupted sutures like this. This makes for a most satisfactory